Dear viewers, welcome to this show Power Chat, Nepal's only TV talk show in English discussing developments since 2016. Through this episode tonight, we are discussing about the university leadership in Nepal with particular focus on the controversy in selection of the <coughs> vice chancellor at the Kathmandu University. And I'm joined tonight by uh, Professor Bibhuti Ranjan Jha. Uh, he is uh, the former president of Kathmandu University Professor Association. And is teaching at Kathmandu University School of Science. Let's talk. Welcome to the show, Professor Jha. Thank you, Lakshman sir. How have you Thank been? Thank you so much. Nice and uh, doing well, good. Well, you have been at the Kathmandu University for a long time serving as a professor. You also served to a very uh, vibrant organization called Kathmandu University Professors Association yeah. a few years back. Yeah. How do you analyze the overall academic leadership issue in the universities of Nepal? Well, University of Nepal, um, I think we have to think that uh, question with uh, two or three levels of uh, our views on the leadership of uh, the University in Nepal. Uh, the main uh, leadership of the, I mean, we are, we are talking about uh, main leadership, that means the Vice Chancellor uh, of uh, the University of Nepal. And we normally, you know, what the people have expectation is the, the person who is a vice chancellor normally is a, something like a very idle person with very high integrity, uh, with, uh, you know, a uh, person of a value for whom uh, we have a high respect and high honor and society looks for such person to be the leader in the university. That means uh, the academic leadership, that means the vice chancellor of the university. So. That is generally a uh, trend all over the world. Uh, and uh, in Nepal also, you know, uh, in past, uh, in few, few occasions, we had that kind of vice chancellors in our universities that was there. Um, but uh, the recent trend is, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the university leadership uh, we are selecting is in a very different uh, way and so that uh, that kind of person, the idle person we, we, we have mentioned, are you know less and less uh, they are getting chances to lead the universities do you agree that the universities in general in nepal uh, are dragged into controversies merely because of the absence of good leadership the qualities you are referring to yeah i agree um, because uh, you know uh, this has to do with our selection process uh, in general in all over the university of nepal um, as we as, as i've said uh, uh, you know in most of the universities of Nepal, uh, it is normally uh, uh, is a political process where the vice chancellor is uh, selected by uh, normally uh, the chancellor who is uh, the prime minister of the country, and then uh, in the process uh, the education minister is involved as a pro chancellor. So it's a political process, and uh, you know there are several. Uh, um, professional group divided into uh, political parties and normally they lobby for their uh, professors of their organization and so that you know somehow uh, uh, good people they don't go and beg for uh, the position of the leadership and good and uh, the people with integrity with value they don't go and ask for uh, the chair to grab the, uh, the that opportunity and normally those people you know who are looking for the chair uh, who are looking for the power and who are a little bit in, in, uh, selfish and individualistic, such people get more and more chances to lead uh, the universities in Nepal. But in Kathmandu University, it is uh, a little bit different story. Yeah, please uh, tell us more about the selection procedure within Kathmandu University. We see in Nepali media for a few years that every day there are stories, you know, uh, teaching, learning uh, activities were halted. Do you think that uh, the current leadership within Kathmandu University was unable to address uh, the issues uh, and concerns of teachers uh, and students that you have been raising for a long time? Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for that question. Um, before coming to that particular question, I, I would like to make a, a comparison yes. between you know, the rest of the university and Kathmandu University. I, you know, in, in Nepal, 
uh, the rest of the university makes one bulk and Kathmandu University separately makes another one uh, group. So in, in the rest of the university, even though it is highly political, you know, there is a lot of lobbying and all these things and somehow it becomes open and transparent, even though they are, uh, you know, politically lobbied individuals. But it is quite open and that there are, you know, uh, there are a lot of discussions and debate going on. In Kathmandu University, what has been the trend is that uh, the vice chancellor is selected, you know, with uh, the same, you know, uh, people representing the sele selection committee, and in a very closed and in an uh, untransparent way, and uh, selecting the same individuals repeatedly again and again and again. So it is. Uh, while uh, in other universities it is, uh, um, you know, uh, the wide national uh, discussions for the leadership. In Kathmandu University it is done very secretly, very quietly, you know, in a, in a very dark and... What are the reasons behind, you know, selecting vice chancellor as such is limited within a, a group of few people as you were referring that of the Senate and uh, Board of Trustee? You know, uh, when you have... Uh, a wide open and transparent system, then you have chances of people coming in, or good people coming in and taking the leadership of the university. But when uh, some people wanted to keep the leadership of the university you know, entirely within their own grip, entirely within their own you know, uh, power, or, or entirely within their own control, so they want to make an entire setup according to that. So in Kathmandu University, what has been done is, you know, uh, whatever, whatever are the committees and the people responsible for selecting the vice chancellors have been carefully, you know, set up in Senate and in Board of Trustee, and you know, uh, it is quite uh, 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 you know amusing for the society to see that uh, the same people who are selected for senator as a Senate member or as a Board of Trustee is also involved in selecting the vice chancellor. So, vice chancellor selects a, a senator and all these things. Well, uh, Professor uh, Jha, uh, as the second tenure of the current vice chancellor of Kathmandu University coming to an end in a few days, in fact, this week yeah. after two days, yeah, sure. and uh, there are me media reports that uh, as many as forty plus uh, candidates, you know, willing to be the vice chancellor of Kathmandu University. Among them, you are also a candidate. Uh, expecting to be the vice chancellor of Kathmandu University, yeah. why should a person not be, you know, selected or appointed as uh, the vice chancellor for third term? Again, thanks for that question. Because you know, it's a normally universal trend in academia or, or in other public, any any other, other public school that a uh, two term is a good time to show the potential, uh, the innovation, the creativity, what the person has, and after. Two terms, that means normally eight years or ten years, normally the things that has, uh, a person has to offer is normally, you know, it is finished, it is exhausted. So he cannot give anything new, new direction, new innovation, new creativity, new energy to the institution. That is, that's why two terms is enough, that is one. And then, you know, another thing is, uh, when you leave the, play, the chair, when you leave the, uh, make the leadership vacant, then more people will get a chance uh, to uh, become a, uh, develop a leadership. Uh, so that is a kind of leadership development. For Kathmandu University, you know, our main, uh, aim, main view is, our, our motto is uh, education for uh, the leadership, development of leadership, that kind of things. So uh, university should be a dynamic uh, institution and it should look for progression. That means for change. So uh, when uh, some person holds the chair for more than two years, then dynamism and progression of the university is stopped. It is stopped. And uh, normally, uh, also in, in Kathmandu University, uh, this case, uh, there are a lot of uh, irregularities and all these things are already there for this current vice chancellor. So he should not uh, continue for the uh, next uh, tenure. And overall, fame of the university is in the crisis. You know, every day we hear in media and all these things about the current, the failure of the current uh, leadership. So. Uh, and the uh, image of the university uh, has gone down. And in recent times, we have all, uh, um, I mean, there is a general view in the society that the quality education in Kathmandu University is also on decline. So we need, for that also, we need a, a new leadership who is inspiring and all these things. And uh, 
um, you know, uh, the current leadership has uh, the other other trait like uh, he uh, he doesn't uh, take uh, give a due respect to other stakeholders like professors, uh, teachers, and the staff, and all these things. Yeah, and uh, another thing uh, why he should uh, leave the chair is uh, that he has himself uh, committed in writing uh, as a chair of executive council that uh, he will uh, go for one one person, one post, and maximum two tenure. He has already signed that document and. Uh, you and know. now he is against uh, his own commitment of yeah. one person, one position. Yeah, when, when he applied for that, he is against uh, his own commitment. What is the university expecting amid this uh, you know, a crisis of leadership? Uh, there are more than 40 candidates expecting to be one vice chancellor at the university. Yeah. What are university expectations? And what is your vision or uh, the new leadership's vision uh, of a university from the perspective of the professors, as a professor of Katman University and as a professor of, and the past official of uh, the organization of professor Katman University. This time, uh, we've been successful of making uh, the selection of Katman University uh, VC uh, quite open and transparent because, because of that, well, uh, it's uh, mm, uh, mainly because of the, this, uh, uh, you know, uh, our Dr. Govinda Kesi's uh, repeated uh, campaign for uh, the selection of uh, officials in the universities to be made uh, transparent and open. And also, Kathmandu University Professors Association's constant uh, support for that, uh, involvement on that, that this time we're, we've been able to make this process open. And it's the first time we are happy that, you know, more than so many people have applied for this uh, by chancellor SIP. And we are happy for that. So as a professor there, we want a change. We want a new professor, but uh, we have not made uh, any individual, uh, you know, uh, we have not targeted any individual who can come and lead the university. Anyone who but is- But you have uh, concluded that the, you know, current leadership, yeah. uh, who was first appointed at the vice chancellor in 2012, yeah. then uh, for second uh, time, uh, he was appointed at the vice chancellor in 2017. Yeah. Now he is also expecting for the third time leadership. Are, are you trying to say that his leadership has been completely failed? It is exhausted also. It is finished. He has nothing new to offer to the university and, uh, to, uh, and from the, uh, to the academic side. That is one part. And another part is there have been uh, failure and there have been, uh, you know, uh, some sign of uh, irregularities, uh, some defamation from its side to the institution has also been there. Uh, like in first tenure, there have been, uh, you know, issues regarding the affiliation to the medical uh, schools, medical colleges, which uh, have been given from the back door as it has been covered by so many uh, media and they are operating. And uh, in, in second tenure, there is uh, some financial irregularities also, all these things. So I would say uh, with all these evidences, one of irregularities and all these things, and another that he has already spent eight, eight, eight years in that chair and he has nothing to, new to offer also. So what that makes him- What are the key challenges within Kathmandu universities and how you plan to address? You know, Kathmandu University has uh, a certain structure and certain function of the university has to be changed. We have seen it for 30 years. Uh, the, histo the history of Kathmandu University, as you, you see that is, is like a six times by one by chancellor and three times by the same vice chancellor sitting in the selection committee. And that's all the, the history of Kathmandu University. When you say the history of Kathmandu University, but it, is, it should be much more than that. So Kathmandu University leadership and leadership uh, selection committee has to be open and uh, has to be different from what is continually being uh, done by same person. So we have some structure and uh, some function we have to change uh, within the Kathmandu University so that it will be better and it will uh, help choose a better candidate for leadership. Like I would say, um, you know, certain structures like uh, a board of trustee, for example. Board of trustee uh, is unconstitutional according to the Kathmandu University uh, constitution. Uh, and uh, whoever are the members there are there, they are self-proclaimed. They have made themselves as a member of the uh, board of trustee. So, uh, there are five uh, live members and um, uh, some other additional members and 
uh, you know, though university is autonomous and they are uh, allowed to make their own laws and bylaws, but those laws and bylaws should be within the limit of the constitution of the university. But board of trustee has been operating above the constitution. It is encroaching the limit of the constitution. That is really uh, strange, Professor Jha. Uh, as you are referring that the board of trustee uh, sitting uh, as the selection committee is unconstitutional at the same time you referring to many irregularities by the current leadership yeah. there were media reports as well uh, that uh, a, a suspicious agreement was signed last year by the vice chancellor uh, yeah. claiming to have uh, an agreement of you know 120 million us dollars uh, where the Ministry of Finance and Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, also University Grant Commission, uh, there was also another committee formed by the uh, current Prime Minister as well, uh, led by uh, Dr. Usha Jha of the National Planning Commission. All these committees and commissions recommended uh, for action and not to sign yeah. uh, this suspicious agreement <coughs> with an organization called Brisbane Foundation. Yeah. So, what do you think? Why, in spite of, you know, uh, recommendations for taking action against the uh, current leadership and there are no actions taken against something very interesting and something uh, you know very malicious also uh, we don't understand but uh, this uh, leadership has been selected by uh, the main person uh, who is now sitting in the board of trustee so somehow they are also responsible uh, for all these uh, irregularities and every whatever has been covered in uh, the media about uh, this uh, 1320 uh, million US dollars uh, or something like that this uh, from Brisbane. It's already been one uh, year but uh, you know yeah. even a single penny has not been delivered. Not de been delivered and uh, 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 in addition you know Cartman University has paid for the visit of uh, the delegates uh, for this uh, uh, foundation, Brisbane Foundation. So that is uh, very uh, Do you see unwanted. any vested interest on part of the vice chancellor in this case? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, vice chancellor, he wants to stay in uh, chair as long as uh, he wants. So that's the thing. And so for that, he, he has to show that he can generate, he can uh, bring in money from inter don uh, national or international donor because he has to show that. Uh, so. One of the reasons that uh, he, he, has done, uh, he has gone for this uh, foundation is uh, to show the Chancellor, the Prime Minister and Education Minister, you know, that he can still bring in the money uh, in the university and he is a, uh, you know, uh, a perfect leadership uh, for the next tenure also. But since it has been failed, so there is no point that, you know, uh, uh, to continue him. In any way, uh, we have already said that uh, you know more than two tenure is uh, enough. So we have we, we Kathmandu University need a change. How you plan to execute the you know changes that a new leadership would try to do that? Okay, um, a new leadership uh, should first, uh, as I have said before, uh, he has to uh, you know intervene or change uh, some systems, some, uh, some structures within the university. That is for first is uh, the senate. Senate is uh, good and inclusive. Uh, there are ex-officios, uh, uh, chancellors and uh, pro-chancellors as uh, prime minister and education minister. There are uh, stakeholders from industry. There are stakeholders from a political side like mayor or parliamentarian. Uh, they are there. There are stakeholders from uh, student also uh, and now from professors also. And we have to change, uh, add one from staff also. But what we need to do is we have to you know, what he's been doing is uh, in the past leadership, they are, they are always selecting same person again and again and again. Once uh, you, are, you become the senator of the university, uh, normally he, he or she is repeated for, you know, um, uh, all the time. That has been uh, done in the past. So the next leadership has to make it mandatory that one or two terms of senate is enough. Because so that then university can respect and honor other good people uh, and invite them to be a senator of the university and give their inputs. So uh, that makes uh, uh, university a dynamic. And the next is uh, we have to uh, scrap uh, the board of trustee uh, because it is unconstitutional and it is operating above the situation. And when it is not there, then you know um, 
the BC selection process, which is normally resolved by uh, this board of trustee, will not be there. And then it will be open and uh, open for all and good people can come in. So these are some structural uh, interventions the new leadership has to do. These are structural. And uh, another fu uh, aspect is the functional one. In the functional, you know, uh, we have to s look for human resource management. Human resource management has always been very bad in university. It, it, it has not been, become so public, but um, people working there, faculty and staff, you know, they have been victim since. And, uh, also I'm, media reports, you know, very frequent media reports in uh, Nepal that the uh, selection of the, uh, you know, staff and academic staff had not been transparent. Not being transparent and not been good. Uh, it's biased. Uh, and a um, lot of people have been victimized. And in the recent trend, you know, uh, because of that bad policies in uh, human resource management, many good people have opted to be out of this uh, uh, university uh, and uh, or out of this uh, leadership. So many people have, I mean, they have deserted the university. Professor Jha, could you uh, tell us about the role of organizations like a professor's association that you led uh, a few years back. Yeah. Uh, the criticism is also there that the you know organizations uh, also uh, uh, were unable to play their role uh, of watchdog. What do you have to say about that? Uh, you know, uh, Kathmandu University Professors Association is not an executive body. Its essence it, 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 it is that it remains as a watchdog. When university does good thing it remains silent. It is okay. The, good is, the thing is running well. But when there are some, uh, some mistakes, some errors, you know, some biasness, uh, some uh, malpractices, some irregularities, then they raise the finger. That's their job. That's what they do. Uh, that was uh, lacking in the beginning for uh, several years in the university. Then when the irregularities, you know, this victimization, this biasness has uh, you know, increased and increased uh, in the university. Then the professors themselves decided to have one body which remains as a one, uh, watchdog and uh, uh, goes for a collective uh, bargaining and all these things. And, you know, um, to have a relation with the professors of other universities and even the international thing. Because now without administration also, professors can have a communication with the academic sector of the entire world. That's why we've been a sister organization of Nepal University Teachers Association, NUTA. And we are a little bit different in a sense that in Kathmandu University Professors Association, um, uh, there has not been a, you know, a partisan politics till now. So we are, we are all united and we have, uh, we have committed that we, uh, within that system, uh, Kathmandu University Professors Association will not bring those things, even though we are quite open for political process because, you know, uh, we are quite disgusted on uh, noting that many people uh, in the society, especially in Kathmandu University, that politics is dirty, politics is bad and all these things. But we want good people to go into politics. We want political discussions and debate going on. We, I mean, we are not afraid of politics. But uh, these incidents show that you know there is a lot of politics within Kathmandu University, especially in the selection of you know vice chancellor. I mean, yeah, but this this politics is not done by faculties. It has been you know very cleverly been set up by the past vice chancellors, and that the same legacy is going on uh, even today. That they don't want uh, you know any person leadership to go away from their control. That's what they are planning. You know, uh, the first vice chancellor here uh, ran the office for six times, six terms, and most of his selection committee were the same people that he uh, selected or nominated as a senator or uh, the board of trustees, same people. And the same uh, story goes on for Dr. Ram Makaju also. So, it is actually they are optimizing their own personal benefit okay, to remain in the chair forever and forever. But uh, now uh, this uh, design has been you know, uh, known by, uh, exposed by Kathmandu University. Or are you process. expecting that a new face would come and join uh, Kathmandu University as the vice chancellor in a few days this week? Sure. We are very optimistic. Uh, uh, we don't know who, but uh, changes, uh, you know, everyone looking for within the How country. How is uh, overall teaching learning, you know, impacted or affected 
with these all demonstrations and protests throughout years uh, against uh, the irregularities and frauds uh, of the current leadership. The current leadership actually uh, never uh, has no intention of engaging himself in academic matters. So the, from the beginning, he was, uh, he was uh, I mean, something like uh, uh, more comfortable in glamorous uh, chair and you know uh, with socializing with uh, the ambassadors, diplomats or big people in the things and academic matters somehow is was not his, in, in his interest. So that's what we have seen over the time. So uh, that is one uh, that schools and departments get neglected. The thing is that and um, uh, with this demonstration by, by Kathmandu universities, uh, staff and teachers and even sometimes students, they, uh, they unite to have some, you know, uh, we want a good teacher, we want a good facility, we want a good lab, we, have, uh, we, we want a better facilities, they do that. Uh, uh, some disturbances, disturbances are there also. Um, from the professor side and from the staff side, you know, most of our uh, bargain, most of our movement has been um, something like that, we didn't hamper uh, the classes, we didn't hamper the um, exams, we didn't hamper the regular functioning of the university until, you know, when the, uh, when the uh, leadership, when the vice chancellor, uh, he completely disregarded what he has committed and signed the things. And, you know, for one year, we have waited and waited to implement the things which he has signed himself to implement. But, uh, you know, after signing the things, he just... Uh, 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 was not uh, able to do so. Uh, yeah, I mean, sincere in uh, delivering the things. Well, uh, Professor, there are many interesting issues you're sharing with us, but we are coming to the end of this. So very quickly, you want to share with our audience that have left to ask you. Well, um, Kathmandu University is a very good institution. We have to make it uh, very good. Um, it has, it, it, it needs a good and uh, dynamic and uh, very uh, you know, able uh, leadership with integrity and values and who can run the university in a democratic way. Whatever being uh, bad things uh, within the university, it has to be corrected by the new leadership. And, uh, you know, uh, there is a very high expectation from within uh, university, uh, teachers, staff and the student that uh, they are looking for new leadership with uh, you know uh, all good things well thank you good very much for joining uh, our show it was a pleasure talking to you thank you Thanks, sir. dear viewers time now to wrap up the show keep watching us see you next week namaste mm -hmm.